All right. We are right at six o'clock, so I want to be mindful of um, not only our participants and our panelists' time, but also um, just all of our time. We want to make sure everybody's safe if they're traveling. The weather is a little precarious out there. Um, so I'm going to go get ahead and get started. Buju Gikino Magani Dug, Jennifer Nimi, Indigenakaz, Megizi Nindu Dem, Gawa Bapi Kanika, Gindunjaba, Idash, Two Harbors, and Da. Um, I'm very uh, grateful to be here with you all tonight. Uh, my name is Jennifer Nemi. I'm the Director of Native Studies at the College of St. Scholastica, and I also work very closely with our Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Office. And so this, um, this panel and everything that kind of happened to bring us here today has been a bit of a labor of love um, for many of us um, in this project. And so I just wanted to take some time to one, uh, give a shout out to Meg McBride. She works in our IT department and she is making this all happen in an amazing virtual way. So miigwech to Meg. Um, also, I just a few reminders before we jump in to attendees. We would ask that rather than using um, the chat option for questions, that you use the Q&A. That's the best way that um, myself and Allison can monitor those questions as they're coming in to make sure that they get answered. Uh, so Allison's gonna talk a little bit more about the project in general, but really the area we're looking at and focusing on in these panel discussions is the Boundary Waters Canoe Area, which um, are part of the Treaty of 1854. Uh, this Treaty of 1854 ceded most of the Anishinaabe lands of Northern and Western um, shores of Lake Superior to the US government. Um, it also in that treaty established uh, the Grand Portage and the Fond du Lac reservations. In exchange for that, um, that seeding of land, uh, the Ojibwe received annual payments and a guarantee that they could continue to hunt and fish throughout this territory. And so part of this, uh, our night, these panels is bringing in how uh, maybe people traditionally view their relationship with the Boundary Waters and how we have, as Anishinaabe have viewed it in for generations. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Allison that can talk a little bit more about our partnership and friends. Thanks, Jen. Um, hello everyone, Buju. My name is Allison Neinheis and I am the Education Director for Friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness. So our organization's mission is to protect and preserve and restore the land that is now known as the Boundary Waters uh, by focusing on wilderness people and community and helping those to thrive. This land and water that we are dedicated to protecting is, as Jennifer said, on the traditional homelands of the Anishinaabe people who continue to exercise treaty rights here. Um, and tonight we're really excited to be here and to have all these wonderful panelists with us um, we want to all honor the knowledge shared here tonight as we learn how the Anishinaabe relationship with this land and water continues to grow and evolve. Um, one of the ways that we protect, or one of the ways that we protect this ecosystem is through education. And so um, we have a middle school and high school program that brings lessons and experiences focused on the boundary waters to middle school as middle schools and high schools around Minnesota. This panel series is part of a year-long project to incorporate these stories and perspectives um, of the Anishinaabe people into this curriculum, and then to be shared uh, through our program participants in these different schools around the state, the state. So this project is a collaboration between the Friends of the Boundary Waters and St. Scholastica, and we were able to receive a grant uh, through the Heritage Partnership Program, which is funded um, through the Minnesota Historical Society. And that allowed us to bring um, an amazing project coordinator onto this um, and into this effort. Um, and that is uh, Dixie Dorman. And so I'll try and turn things over to her next. LCO and Da. I forget how to say that. 
Um, <clears throat> so I'm the project coordinator for this um, project. It is a curriculum project. Um, and as um, Allison and Jennifer spoke about, um, it's a project between the two institutions um, and it's a curriculum project. And we're hoping, what we're ultimately hoping to do is to bring more understandings um, to the, you know, Western systems, travel, or the BIE systems, you know, just all school systems um, for our youth grades six through 12 um, with our knowledge um, about, you know, what we know and what we understand um, about the boundary water area, but also um, our understandings of what the water means to us, um, what Mother Earth means to us, um, our tribal ecological knowledge, our knowledge of the language, um, how, you know, what is happening with the earth um, affects us as human beings, um, how we um, also, you know, deeply honor and um, want to have the knowledge of the elders um, because their knowledge is so precious and it's not the kind of knowledge that is written in books. And when um, we say often in Indian country, when um, an elder passes, it's like a Smithsonian library, you know, I mean, it's gone, everything. And we hope that um, we can be a participant in um, retrieving that knowledge and doing that in a really respectful, honorable way um, with passing tobacco and um, doing it in the ways that we understand and we know as Anishinaabe people um, to retrieve our knowledge about who we are. And so I apologize. Um, I have a really bad upper respiratory infection. So I've been in and out of a fever all day today and taking all kinds of medication. <laughs> um, so I'm doing my best to be here and be present. Um, but if I seem a little quiet or not as boisterous as I normally am, that's what's going on. Um, also, just a few things. Um, tonight's topic will be about storytelling. And I will bring out that discussion topic um, a little bit later. Um, but to get us started, we're going to start out with a prayer. Uh, Bus Wei Wei on a um, Lily will be starting us out with a prayer. Um, and because we're on Zoom, because we're trying to keep it COVID safe, uh, we are asking that folks take a minute or two and we'll give you that time to go and retrieve some tobacco and put it in your hand while she's saying the prayer. So that'll be a part of what we're doing before we start the discussion. But also, um, we are going, I'm going to um, introduce all the panelists. I'm going to ask for a little help from Meg McBride because I can't remember the order that we had put them in. I do know that we were starting with Nancy Jones. Um, we are honored to have her presence here tonight. She is joining us from Canada, I believe. Um, and she is an elder. So um, Meg, if we could get started with her and then um, I will also follow up after Nancy is done and talk a little bit about her bio. Um, but so if you could spotlight her, um, Meg, to start with Nancy, that would be wonderful. Anyway. Nancy, can you turn your camera back on again?
It was on a moment ago. There you go. I was too shy, that's why. <laughs> there you go. Haha, Buju. Need to get my name big, or get my coy big, baby, my shan to go. Or shush, go and do them. Nikki goes to many gardening on Monday. I'm just going to use my language for a while. So uh, you mentioned tobacco there. Um, after I received this uh, phone call this morning, I went to the drum and took my pipe and I, I sat with the drum and I smoked the pipe and I asked the drum to, uh, to forgive me or forgive us for not getting tobacco on hand at the beginning. So I'm kind of, wonder sometimes that I do it without, you know, cause the way I've seen people in years ago, long time ago, is tobacco was always first. What I'm said out in my language is I'm, I'm kind of a little bit afraid of this uh, Zoom thing. It's been, I know it's been on two years, but uh, over here when I, when well around here, they, uh, when they ask me something, come and see me first and give me your tobacco so I can I can be free to, uh, I can do what you ask of me. So that's why I sent that email that I was a little bit wondering how, uh, like you, you mentioned you're holding tobacco in your hand. What I did was I lit up my pipe and sat by the drum and asked for forgiveness for doing this on, on Zoom and also the not using our own language and Shinabe Gagigitoin. That's that's did you want me to start a prayer or are you gonna do it? I have started mine, so I don't know. I don't know what you want me to do right now, but I was just thinking I'm just gonna sit here and listen for a while I talk. Um, Did you want to do your protocols or Miigwech, Nancy. Miigwech. Um so um if it's okay with you nancy i'm gonna talk a little bit more about you um if that's all right with you can i have your permission to do that dixie can you get just a little bit louder yeah i can hardly hear you yeah you can barely hear you if it's okay with you nancy I'd like to talk a little bit more about you, but I'd like to get your permission to do that. Is that okay? Well, depending on what you're going to say about me. Nah, I'm just kidding. Sure, go ahead. All right. Um, so we're really fortunate to have Nancy Jones join us tonight. Nancy Jones is a first language speaker of Anishinaabe Mon. She is a respected elder from the Nagikusin Wedekaming First Nation on Rainy Lake, Ontario. Nancy is a cultural advisor, educator, sharing the gift of the Anishinaabe language and cultural heritage. And she's joined us tonight. We're really fortunate to have you. So thank you for joining us. I know that the Zoom is... Um, definitely a different way of connecting and I appreciate you taking the time to go to the drum and use your pipe and um, access or you know ask or pity on us for the things that we're doing here tonight over zoom so I appreciate you doing that thank you um, hey, Rich. Actually, my daughter is going to um, do our prayer tonight, if that's okay with you. Is that okay with you, Nancy? That's fine with me. I can hear you now. All right. <laughs> 
All right, migrants. All right, I know the next person in line um, for introductions is Roxanne. So Roxanne, please introduce yourself to everyone. I um, will introduce myself to you formally, but I'll also tell you in English who I am. Roxanne DeLille is what my mom tagged this vessel and yet um, is what I'm known as in the spirit. Eh? Um, I guess I'm gonna apologize up front for the stiffness and in a little bit, I'm sure gonna be the grogginess <laughs> as I'm waiting for drugs to kick in. I slipped and fell in the mud and um, landed on my back stairs. So it's um, got me pretty sore, um, but I'm really happy to be here again with you. Thank you so much for that. I'm, I'm really happy to um, sit with auntie and, and grandma. It's always good to listen to her and, and to um, be with the rest of the panel as well. I Miigwech. Miigwech. Miigwech, Roxanne. Um, and thank you for coming despite your fall. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. All right. My guess is the next person on our list would be Wasi Gijic. Is that correct, Meg? It's Keller. He's up. I, I put right. it in the chat, the order. Oh. Dixie, I don't know if you can see that. Okay, thank you. I can see it now. Wawakayash, Ginatum. Kalbuju. Ninsa, Wawakayash, Digu. Migizi, and do dame. Odawa Zaga, Gunning, and Da. Do Jibadashki, waiting on Iwadesa, Miss Kwabikang, Asian Kadek. Danuki Omash Koniganing Maudawa Zaga Iganing Odessa Wadukudading is Winjaga dig. Miguet Kina, we are my Wija Yawad Yanguma. The Wendam and Wendam Kagwejimi Guyan Mada, we do Kagayan, the Dajendaman O Bangi, Bemu Duyan O. It came to man when Jenna Shinabe, we young Nage and Shinabe, a name dung Iosa, Kiway dung boundary waters, as you read Jagade, Naguge, Odessa, Wangeba, the Ao, Ogimago Navik, Yingusmin Kanin K and Nage, Shkondigan and Ewadi Kami, Shabaja going a name to man, and a Shinabe, okay, the name dung me. We go to everyone, I'm Keller Pap. I am uh, from the Red Cliff Band of Lake Superior, Anishinaabe. I live at uh, Lakota Ray, which is near Hayward, Wisconsin, Northwest Wisconsin. Um, I am uh, from the Megizi clan. Megizi is a bald eagle. They call me Wawa Chaos. Um, and uh, I work at a place called Wadukudading. It's uh, an organization dedicated to the revitalization and uh, promotion of Anishinaabe language, Anishinaabe values and education and learning and uh, life ways and been doing that for 20 some years. So I'm just grateful to be here and I'm especially excited being to Gade Ogimao Gwenevik. I consider her one of our most um, prolific, prominent, productive elders of the Anishinaabe nation who has had a profound impact on many, many people, uh, good impact on, on especially us younger Anishinaabe people. And um, we turn to her for a lot of work and she, um, she's just been such a strong guiding force for our people and um, I'm just really glad that you're here, Coco. So, miigwech, Apaje. Oh, wa miigwech, Apaje. Minan wa wa keash. Miigwech. Yeah.
Bonjour, Bonjour. Michael Price, was a Gijik indigenous cards. Makwa Nindo Dem. We quem come First Nations, the Bindagosian, Midash Nungum, Wish Kong Sing, in Dayan Nungum. Nindanoki Oma, Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission, Ejnakadik. Nimin Wind of Eja Yan, Man Nungum. Greetings, everyone, my relatives. My name is Michael Price Wasegijik. I am from the Bear Clan, and I'm enrolled at uh, uh, Wequimacon First Nations in, in uh, Manitoulin Island, Ontario, Canada. <clears throat> but I currently live in uh, Wisconsin. I just moved here a short time ago. And I work for the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission. And it's a pleasure for me to be here today. Naha. Miigwech. Naha. Uh my English name is Leah Prusha, and I, I want to apologize on the front end about my my voice and my energy level this evening as well. So um, I, I currently teach uh, at the College of St. Scholastica in the Master's in Social Work program, and I'm also a member of the Native Studies Advisory Committee. Um, I've got a small private practice here in the Duluth area. Um, uh, I, I'm Anishinaabe and of Anglo-European descent and consider White Earth, Gawa Baba Ganikag, uh, home. Um, looking forward to uh, learning from everybody and, and sitting with you all this evening. Miigwech, Mio. Miigwech. Um, would you like me to do the prayer now? Oh, um, you the Serena Kikwe Indigenous Cause, Mako and Dude Miskwabi Kong and Nunjba. Um, Odawa Zaka Igani Inda, you know, um, kind of budge, you tell you. Um, Ninga or Ninda Anitau Nungum. Um, hello everyone. I am Lily. I am Bear Clan. I'm from Redcliffe. I live in um in Alcio. Uh, Look at oils. And I am glad to be here tonight. So, yeah. That's it. Miigwech. Miigwech, Baswe, Rayana, Makikwe. Ash, Baswe, Ginatam. Buju, Gosh, Baswe, Indigenous Cause, Mako, Nindu, Name, Squabu, Kani, Nujaba. Um, then my um, 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 I'm Bear Clan. Uh, I'm from Redcliffe and uh, I live in Hayward and I go to Water Good Outing School. Hayward, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Miigwech. 
Any breaks? All right. Um, <clears throat> if we all want to take a few moments um, to a minute or two to grab your tobacco, um, I'll do that now. And then when everybody comes back, um, Lily or Bus Way Way on McKeekway will say the prayer for us. And, um, and then after that, we'll take a few moments and everybody can um, do what you need to do with being your tobacco outside or however you need to do that. All right. Butch. Any grapes? So should I start? I think we'll wait give us for some, your mom to yeah. give us a cue here. Yeah, give us a second. Bit. All right, if you wanna show us that you're ready by um, turning on your camera, if you haven't already done that, so that we know that you're present and ready. And then we'll get started. Uh -huh. Bus way way on a way. Could you please do our prayer? You wait. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself again with the prayer. So, um, Buju Kenawea, Pasarani Kikwe, and Dijan Kaz, Mako and Dude, Muscovy Kong and Dunjba. Kitchi Benesque gave meaning on no semon de Gagi Zitagazi on Nigum. Nui Maguitu Akina we are Maya Nigum. Minoa Kinamani Dugamaki. A marking Ishbeming Wabinum. Oh, Jawanung Wabinum. Ningabianum Nago Gai Hiki Wadenum. Minoa Winabuju, a commissar no Dijamani Gai. Nui me guetchue a benesio a pi gimme wong nungum, minoa, and in a take money do a pi a yan, iskiga mizigang nungum, minoa, and who watch money do. Gani kena masin a kena money do a pi a kena um, a kena money do. A pia kina wea domino se nunga, we say. Ah, me gretch. Wah, me gretch. That's why I'm gonna make you great. All right. Um, I think that using the camera off and on is a good uh, way to let, let us know um, when we're ready. So if you want to 
take this moment now and put out your tobacco or um, do what you do with it. And um, we'll take a couple minutes to do that before we get started. Be great. So bonjour again, um, I, Jennifer Nimi, I just put out my asama and came back and my cat decided to take over my chair. So we're sharing now. Um, but while we're waiting for everyone to return, I just thought maybe I'd share with some of our, our attendees the importance of, of asama, of tobacco and giving it as a, a gift when we ask um, someone to, you know, that we're looking for knowledge or wisdom. Um, when we want to put good intention forward, that is uh, a way we do it is by offering a Sama tobacco. And it has been weird, right, in COVID times to not be able to, wanting to keep our community members safe and which butts up against um, what we would traditionally do in healthy times. And so it's been a little bit of a an awkward moment, um, but I feel very blessed to have all our panelists here and our attendees um, that are present with us today. So I apologize in advance if you meet um, my cat. She is behind me. As I said, she took over my chair while I while I went out to put out my, my asama. So um, with that, uh, I will turn it back over to, to Dixie. I do want to say one thing. Um, uh, when I was uh, doing the prayer, I forgot to say, like, with you guys, like, um, to put out that prayer for um, the sick ones to get better and then for the people who are not feeling or, or are hurt right now to get better. So... Um, I said that after I left, so that's all I had to say. English. Good job there, girl. Be great, Donis. All right, is everyone back? 
Ganosh and do a whim. Yeah. All right. Um, remind me if I'm talking too softly. It feels like it takes all my air just because of this sickness I got in my chest here. Someone's um, at my door. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> do more for a while. Just for clarification purposes, did she say someone was at her door? She did. Okay. Did. And did she say that she was gonna be gone for a minute? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Duty calls, duty calls. Elder, elder in need. All right. Um. So tonight we want to talk about storytelling and we're hoping that um, with this topic um, that everyone can share um, what you know and understand um, about storytelling. Um, it's of such significant important importance to us excuse me um as anishinaabe people um it gives us guidance um in this life that we're living here um helps us um understand who we are as anishinaabe helps us understand um the many living beings that surround us um it helps us understand um, the money dude and their role in our lives as well. Um, and for this particular um, trying to think of how to say this for tonight, we're hoping that with storytelling for this project that um, you know, please share whatever is in your heart. you know, I know tobacco was passed. And I understand the importance of that. And when, you know, the tobacco is passed and, and then we do the prayer that um, we're guided in what we're going to be talking about. Um, and, but we also are kind of hoping if it's possible to um, kind of push the conversation in the direction of talking about um, the role of storytelling um, that it plays with our, you know, tribal ecological knowledge. Um, I haven't ever heard a story about how um, storytelling um, and the role of, you know, climate change. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't know if you all have heard that. Um, if we have, or if we have teachings about that, that would be absolutely wonderful to hear tonight. But also how it teaches us how to conduct ourselves as humans with regards to how we're taking care of the earth um, and doing that in a good way. So um, is Coco back with us? I'm here. Um, I would also like to um, ask for your permission um, to get your guidance and how you'd um, like to see some of this go as you being the elder here tonight and um, just listening to what I was talking about. If um, you could give us some guidance about that, that would be wonderful. How bangi bangi go get the badge. Way because you a buckman on gum, Michigan mining shall be born. You a bit young, we're going to go and wear my gak to Chicagoing. Hey, eat a snin denandum, Zama, Zamasta, 
no, my mangi, gipika, gipika, which me cook, Oshkaya yak, me eat a scatter in the mongo. Gipisani go men, a coach at the sheik among. Gimini goes in an anin, give our chicken in anin. Me work at she winter mongo, meet me away. Me took away got the shintaman, a global warming gaitaman. I e um I'll try and explain it. I'm not uh, I'm not the uh, fluent in your in in the other language. I usually have a, a translator with me here, so but not she's not here. Anyway, um, talking about um, whatever we call this global warming or illness that's that's here here with us now, uh, COVID nineteen or whatever. It's been a couple of years now. And I've been asked, why, why is it like this? Why, why is it like this? I remember as um, a child by my grandma and grandpa. I had two grandmas and two grandpas that I was, I really um, visited a lot. Actually, I lived with one of them. And whenever something happened, because we all, we had, canoes and we didn't have cars or anything like that. Whenever some storm, storm is happening, she would tell us, now this is a time to stay home and let, let's, let's, let's do our own homework, a real homework. Think about um, our gifts, our gifts from the creator, our, our way of life as Anishinaabe. That's what she that's what she used to do. She used to gather us her, her grandchildren. There were eight of us at one time. And we go sit at her her wigwam and we listen to her her teachings about life, about a head. We talk about Nenabush a lot. Nenabush is uh or Wenabush. Nenabush's way of life is uh, it was a teaching for us to pay attention to those teachings. And you get a lot out of that when you when you understand uh, what Nenabush did, some some good and some bad, but uh, there were mostly uh, messages while we had these uh, storytellings. So when grandma said, it's too windy to get out there, it's too, it's raining, it's snowing, let's stay home and do our, uh, our own teachings, our own uh, ignore, uh, acknowledge our traditional gifts and pass it on to, uh, she, she would pass it on to us. And then she, uh, sometimes she will take us into the night and tell us about legend. The legend of uh, Nena Bush is uh, a way of life, a way we should follow our life, a way, a way he just, not too long ago, I did uh, The Spirit of Winter. And that was, um, that, that's another thing they used those, those legends was uh, they wanted the weather to change because we were uh, lived in, a, in the bush and we wanted to be cold, we wanted to be hot, we wanted to be warm. So we choose a legend of uh, which one. So when I did The Spirit of Winter, it got real cold for a few days. <laughs> and then they blame me for that. Because that's how that's how we used to use these legends. If you want it to be warm, and then you 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 tell a story, maybe the dancing ducks or something, and then it turns warm. Okay, that's that's how we used to use that. That's why the that's why the teachings are there. Pay attention to that teaching. And then at the end, it tells you that, uh, well, I was thinking about the uh, two, um, Esteban and uh, the two blind men. 
is what my grandma said. Don't ever steal anything or else you're going to have to wash your food each time you eat. Mia, that's it for now. <laughs> Miigwech. It, uh, Bieni, oh, no, I, I think it's nice to have uh, questions from uh, maybe what? from the young people. Because I really don't know what you want to know. But, but if I hear a question, I, I would try, maybe try to answer it or, or talk about it. But I, I never went to school. So I, my schooling was uh, at, the, at, at home. Back home, my first language is Anishinaabe Muin. And I live in a bush. I have a stove in my house, but I do have electricity. <laughs> So uh, I have a, I keep a drum next door here. I mean, in the next room here, and that's where I went and put my tobacco to the, to the drum. Beba Maki is in Kazo. Her name is Beba Maki. Miigwech. All right, Jen, do we have any, um questions in the Q&A. Sounds like Coco would like to have some questions from the um, attendees. Yeah. Sure. We did have one, one wishing that everybody who is feeling under the weather um, physically or just through illness that you feel better soon. And also a question that I, I tried to answer, but I think um, I will turn to all of you wondering so how does Anishinaabe refer to um does it refer to several first nations peoples how's that i didn't i didn't quite understand that they said so how does Anishinaabe refer to several first nations peoples several other i, I can... think she means um um, when when we use the word Anishinaabe, is it referring to one people or many peoples? Is that correct, Jen? I, I think so. Um, I just, I can give you my response and hope that, and then I maybe you can fill in what I missed, but um, I just said we're a large nation. We span Canada, uh, what we know is now is Canada, Michigan, mm, Wisconsin, Minnesota into, you know, North Dakota. Um, that, you know, I was taught uh, the name, the, the, the word Anishinaabe translates to first man. And we're also part of a larger family known as the Algonquin. But again, that I would turn it over to the panelists to add more to that that I'm I think, um, I think Anishinaabe to me is, uh, Anishinaabe is basic. Anishinaabe, a whole bunch of them. Nija Anishinaabe, my fellow Anishinaabe, Nindinawe Magan, because we all called each other Nindinawe Magan, meaning our relatives. Nija Anishinaabe is all around. All the Anishinaabe are my, my fellow, my fellow Anishinaabe. <laughs> mm. So Anishinaabe and Anishinaabe, I think that's what you're asking. Nanija Nishinabe, my fellow Nishinabe. So we have if other panelists want to also share their thoughts, we also have a few more questions that we can if we want open it up to um to the greater group. I have a question before we do before we do that. Um Coco. And I hate to put you on the spot, Lola Kayash, but I'm going to. I'm already there. Would it be helpful? <laughs> would it be helpful if um, Wawa Kayash helped to translate for you? I think so. That that would be nice. I was going to ask. I work with my son Don, and he was here today, and uh, he asked me if he if I needed him to translate for me. But I said I I don't know. I didn't ask yet. I said. <laughs> So give me go, give me go. I walk. I ask. I spend no issues. Again. Thank you. We quite the tune in. Was we on? How? We're gonna end this. Get this in the man. 
Hey, yeah. Where are you going? Go. Aha, aye, aye. Aye, a coin get the shin done. May you say, keep your hand, keep your big yarn, keep your big no jee, we are. Me go up a net to nunga a yarn, get shy a ag, and thou what? Me to shigan it to be cuck, me on in your panic up a centaman, at stock a nun. We need to go get near, get in the bay. Getting in the bag, I have any bissing the man. Me to scoga, I should away no coven. My chan papa yan eat an opening. A babby sent away, give away. Can on dag was a wat no peming. A babby sent away wasting yak, pinachin yak. Nuska away say magda magina. And the wabam away, me tick, come on mog knows it, come on mom's chalk was it. Me on in the way. Or get to see me on or go away, me to go. Me, you ain't got a kid at me this year. They go no gum gun you on the scent of work or scare your ag, my in the cookie a young, guy in appetizing a can massig, go chip chip of a yawat, no pimic, no scare not way. Can't can the way to get the way again, thou go to the way a guy in the cookie can. Dana go to a con go think away a wabush to go beat the moit. Muzama to some ego now on or no, I got to shake a moadga, magai pito at gago. Meet Margaret number stranger ark. I knew Joe and his sick work, it did not see with Ninan. Beggish gave we knock, skit to what no piming jibber by she with now at away, or need John Siwa, Gamma, Wush Siwa. Wush can not win go think away giat. Keep a bum, cushioned, waggy knee, big meaning no weapon, egg, or shit, she gay on. Me, yeah, gain in good no up and done. We could say each of my hour to go away, Kushkaya, Ak, Pushkang, Kinibat, the way, because they aim it, my bow, she get the way, Yaki, the Bishko, the Bishko, or we pay man away, new Okomistan, Kitung, or Mother Earth Kaita Mort. Me mind I never in the mark for no sack. The Casanaba by an opening, but by Papa Bissent out go ebb in a shinyak. Pushkana oegi at the way. Keep a send out him to go. Me question on the wind out giga canoni to what he came to go. Kind kind way a shot giga. Pushka can go tango up a mark of gee. To go with the go aya. Sakin gin the oak is in Agusiok. Working no, it's all good. Manu, Queen of Wainaman, visit Duna, and Akaja, Minotuna, and oh, wow. So uh I'll try my best here. I, there was a couple spots there. I my pen wasn't keeping up with my ears. Oh wow, you're using a pen. Just Use quick that. little notes to keep me on track. Yeah, otherwise I'll just be in uh, listening to you. I'm always in awe, and I just um, I just let it all soak in. So I just uh, okay. I have to tell people that there's so much power in our language that um, it is. Okay, get it has its own spirit and its own life force, and we connect with that so deeply as Anishinaabe people, mm -hmm. and it's sometimes hard for us to explain that. But I've seen the healing power of the language. Like I know a man, he had a stroke and he, it was hard for him. He was bilingual. He spoke Ojibwe in English and he, um, he just kept speaking Ojibwe 
after his stroke, he and mm -hmm. he he came back and he healed. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, Bob Jordan, I remember he was the that happened to him. Oh wow, I know him. <laughs> yeah, good to know him. Yeah, good to know him again. Yeah. So so, um, Ogimagunevik was talking about how she was raised, um, and she spent a lot of time at elders' houses, and that was commonplace for kids in those days. Mm -hmm. um, the visiting where you would spend time with with um, older people. And, uh, you know, we think of them not just as older people. There, there are teachers and our caretakers. Sometimes we just, we have so much to learn from them. And that's what she did. So um, she'd go at night, nighttime to their houses, their homes, and they would tell stories. They would talk about uh, the legends that we call them our mm -hmm. Um, And it, you know, I have to add in too, there's a little bit there about Adazukanag, you know, you might hear them talked about in English as like Chippewa legends or something like that, maybe in the literature, but we really don't think of them as legends. We, because they're alive, they're living things with spirits. And so we don't think of them as like Mother Goose fables or Aesop's fables, you know, oh, yeah. those things about, um, you know, Mary had a little lamb and all that. <laughs> it's far beyond that. And it's so deeply rooted to our identities as Anishinaabe people. Uh, and so I tell people like, when we learn our language and we go deep with it and we embrace our ways, uh, it is a huge defining element of who we are as Anishinaabe people. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really, it's it's just such a part of us, you know. Um, and so when she would go over in the evening to hear stories, they would talk into the night, her, her late grandma. Um, she would talk and um, sometimes going into her sleep as she started falling asleep and stay up as late as she could to listen to those stories but she did that over and over and over for many years and many many seasons and you can see uh, how powerful that would be as a transformative experience for a person really helps to define who you are um, but through that process you know she was told you you guys should get outside you guys should go out get out there and get outside and go listen to the woods listen to the trees, listen to the birds and all the sounds of nature and acclimate yourself there. Just be out there and let all that energy come into you and, and be a part of you. You know, we are nature really, right? We are, mm -hmm. we are a being of nature. So am I on track so far there, Coco? You're doing good. Okay. Give me no tagos. <laughs> and so she told them, miigwech, she told them to go listen to the birds and the creatures and everything that's out there, but also to find the biggest trees, the biggest ones you can find, the widest and the tallest. Biggest tree. The biggest one. Okay, that's mom will mom will gain walk. Yeah, okay. that's the elder right there. And so that's the one that's uh like the boss out there in a way. You no. put your tobacco out there. Yeah, way. And so we still, a lot of us still do that today. Um, and so when we see the fires in the boundary waters and the places where we used to go up by Red Gut and other places or where there's logging going on, mm -hmm. sometimes that's really anxiety inducing for us. Um, and it's sort of like losing a relative. So if you think about maybe losing your dear grandma or your grandpa who you love so much in your life and to have that happen uh, sometimes it's really hard for us to to see that and know that that's happening like when that was going on in Australia all those bushfires or when they're cutting down in the Tarkine and they're logging those massive 2,000 year old trees down they just don't even know what they're doing and how, what they're taking away because that elder in that forest is like a backbone to that whole ecosystem all of them exactly. together in their strength yeah so it's hard mm -hmm. but she said her, her grandma would tell her to go out and find that biggest tree but also um 
the importance, she talked about the importance of hunting and being active and leading a natural life outside. So um, hunting and snaring. And she said, and, and the kids should be involved in that whole process to make that part of their lives. So, so take your babies, take your kids and your grandkids out there because they have to see that and they have to feel it and know what it's like and participate in that. And they get, um, you get healing from that and you get strength from that because you connect with the natural environment that way. But she also expressed concern that, that there aren't as many people doing it anymore as there were. And so she says, I, I miss that. I long for that, to see that in our younger okay. generations. So it's good to have our younger people heavily involved in these activities too. So that's why she tells her kids and her grandkids, take your kids out there, get outside, be out there, get out and just be out there as long as you can in the, in all the weather conditions and all the seasons. So you know what it's like, because it'll teach you something out there. Um, oh, yeah. You also talked about it. Yeah. You can see the three shaking hands at each other or yeah. just bending over saying, hey, Buzu. <laughs> you see a lot when you're in a bush and you hear a lot and you can think really good when you watch everything. Like um, I was also too, you should go sleep on the ground, just, just bare ground. You don't need no... Um, mattress or anything just go sleep with mother earth you'll have this good dream here and i've done it and that's what i like to see with my grandkids i only got 21 of those and i don't know if they're doing it me wag it wag me tagus oh me great me great me great me great and i can order my yen oh be great to know you in my how you know I, I know so little and um listening to coco I, I i realize just you know how little i do know sometimes and yet um i can i can only contribute but little bit i do know and and so when i think about um my own background my own background is both in an educational field and then in sitting on the ground um, mm -hmm. for so many years, you know, but um, my, my educational field, I was introduced to um, epistemology. And I remember seeing that word the first time and I'm going, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> you know, I could barely even say it, epistemology. And so, but that was the same with many of our, our words too in the language. Eh? Um, but this idea of coming to understand truth and and what is real and what what is and that's the importance of stories the the importance of stories is that it it provides all those answers to us hey it mm -hmm. explains everything um these are these are from tiny narratives to to teaching stories to to all of it and if you listen to what coco said that that's a lot of what she was talking about eh? is how we come to understand what is true and what is real and what our values are. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and that, so for me, epistemologically, I think about this, I love being able to even say that word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think about how in my own life, um, you know, my mom, my mom didn't, didn't know um, much. She didn't know much at all. And my grandma, my grandma wouldn't wouldn't allow her to speak much. My my grandma didn't say hardly anything. My grandpa now, my grandpa every so often would try to say things. And my grandma was shh, shh, don't don't talk about that. You know, she she was real funny about it. She did not want her children punished in the same way that she had been. Yeah, that's and that, so that. yeah, and so I think of I think of you know all those stories then that were lost in that way. And all the new stories that came about as a result that began to form what in me as a little girl came to be the truth. 
And so I, I think about that a lot. You know, I think about how um, all these things that we say and all these things that we do and how they, they begin to form the realities of our life. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, so, so we actually begin to see through the stories that we hear in our life. And I really wish I had paid better attention. I, I, I remember bits and pieces, you know, of, of some of the things grandma would say to grandpa. And I remember bits and pieces of my aunties and uncles talking back and forth. And I remember bits and pieces of, of the various kind of conversation, because I used to love hiding under the table and listening to them. Eh? Now, some of this was not good stuff <laughs> but, but there were but but you know what what i come to find out is that you, you know that there's there are things that trickled through that even though my mom didn't know hardly anything and my aunties and my uncles had moved away from the reservation and had moved away from the communities and had been in urban areas okay there were things that trickled through and that's something that amazed me all these, you know, what I thought were just kind of odd little behaviors. I mean, in our family, it's just the way things were done. Eh? When somebody come in the house, you got them a cup of coffee, you got them something to drink and you fed them. You know, I go to my auntie's house and I say, oh, no, no, ah, ah no, 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 go in, sit down and eat. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. so there's all, all these things that trickled through. The, the importance of helping each other, um, the, the way in which to um, recognize that, you know, they are who they are because of their life. You know, don't, mm -hmm. don't condemn them. So there's all these things that trickled through and I didn't know it until way later as, as I sat on the ground and I listened to the stories of our people. I saw all that had, you know, I didn't see all of it, but I began to see those things that filtered through that, um, Later on, I came to understand as blood memory. And, and so I, I, I think about that now, and I think about the, the really central importance that stories play in our lives. Even if as a child, we're not listening, we think we're not listening, okay? That stuff trickles through. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I, I think of, um, you know, like the work that, um, well, Kayash does, I think about the work that Coco does. I think about the work that's being done and how important it is for our little ones just to hear these stories, even if, even if they got to hear them in English, just so that they have something to connect to. You know, I think about just how important it is to talk about, you know, and, 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 and I think of all these stories hey, and how important they are because they are the truth. Mm -hmm. They are what builds the truth in us and, and how um, my, my truth has shifted. My, my idea of what's real and what's right and what's good and, and um, it, it's shifted, eh? Um, mm -hmm. Over the years, the longer I sat and the more I connected all these disconnected pieces, um, the more it shifted. And I, and, I, and I think I said this last time, I, when Uncle Jim Dumont in a talk one time was talking to us and he asked us if we were in our right mind. He said, are you in your right mind? And I hmm. thought, well, yeah, I, think I don't so. have an answer for that. Is oh. there something else I can help with? My phone is sitting here and Suri is answering my <laughs> question. <laughs> she is she I, she answering I, you. <laughs> yeah. Suri is not in her right <laughs> um, and so when, I, when he when he clarified he said are you in your good Anishinaabe mind then then I was able to make a, a bit of a shift eh? and and so I I I see just the, the the real central importance of the narratives of the of the bits and explanations of the the, the actual telling of story, of, of listening to legend, of you know, all, all of these bits and pieces, eh? how important they are to us, because that is what develops our truth. That's where our values come from, everything. Everything. Meet you. Kidebwe means you're right. <laughs> Um, 
Okay, great. Tracks on. Um, want to say Kajic? Yes, I, uh, I've been given a lot of thought uh, about this, uh, this word, Adizukan, and what I've learned about it. And, uh, and Keller just mentioned it just a little bit ago about how these stories that we consider to be animate um, actually can have a transformative effect on people. And I know this for real because um, I heard a story once in 1998 it was told by an elder from, uh, from Winnipeg, actually Onigaming First Nations, Tobasanaqua uh, Kinyue Bun. And he told the story of the Wolverine, the Wingwa Age. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I just came to listen to the stories that day, but after I heard that story, uh, it, it, it changed the path of my life. And because um, what I heard in that story was, uh, a tremendous amount of science, a tremendous amount of, of observation that had been passed down through generations, preserved in the name of that Wolverine, Wingwage. And I, uh, after that, I, I could not get enough of these stories and this indigenous knowledge. And I, it, it changed my whole life. I, I started pursuing that path and bugging every elder that came across my path, you know, uh, about a story or about a piece of knowledge. And, and it, it became, um, I ended up staying in one place for 20 years and I ended up getting a, a teaching certificate in Ojibwe language because after I got done with my science, now I wanted to study the language. But it all began with that, that one story about the Wolverine. And like I said, it transformed my life. And it's mm -hmm. and today, I'm the traditional ecological knowledge specialist of the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission. And I live 12 miles away from, uh, from uh, uh, Muningwane Kaning, which is Madeline Island. Mm -hmm. And one of the most sacred islands uh, to the Anishinaabe people. And uh, and this is where my life has taken me because of that, because of that story. So absolutely, our stories are animate and they're powerful. And when you hear them at the right time of your life, it'll, it'll, it'll make you a stronger, and a better person. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that. And actually, I shared, what, five years later, I told that same story to a group of educators. And one of the guys sitting in that room was, uh, he was working on his PhD in, in, in uh, geology. And of course, in that story um, is about a star falling and hitting the earth. And of course, this, this guy who was getting his, his PhD in geology was just fascinated. But of course, he was also very cynical, which is kind of what science teaches you to be. It teaches you to be cynical and to ask questions. And so he challenged me on that. And he goes, well, I'm just going to do some research and find out when the last meteorite hit the earth. Very diligently about it, he went and he didn't find much information. <clears throat> but the next time I saw that guy, which is a year later, he was wearing a bear claw necklace. And he was getting ready to move to North Dakota to work for Turtle Mountain Community College hmm. as a science instructor. So that story had a transformative effect on him as well. Yeah. And he was a uh, uh, he, he was uh, he was a Caucasian guy, and it had that same effect on him too. So, uh, so that's the story I wanted to add about the uh, the power uh, of our language and the power of, of these sacred stories that we call Azukan. Mm -hmm. No, miigwech. Every time, I say, every time I say something, I hear an echo of me. <laughs> bust, bust <away> wish. <laughs> oh. I already talked. I spoke. <laughs> Leah, Leah hasn't talked yet. We got to give you a chance. I'll, I'll just keep talking i'll keep translating for coco well whatever you want you're okay, the moderator well, 
We'll get somebody else Leah. in there. Hear from you. Leah? Uh, Miigwech Keller, even though I wanted to hear from you, we still need to hear from you. <laughs> I, I have to say, um, it, it's really humbling to sit with all of you on this panel. Um, one of the things that I shared with Dixie, I said, you, I, I didn't grow up in these ways. I did not grow up in our Anishinaabe ways, in our language, in our traditions. But um, hearing uh, Coco speak about uh, getting outside and listening Mm -hmm. listening to the land, listening to the trees and the plants and the animals. That's one thing I did do. I, I grew up in the Red River Valley um, between the wild rice and Red Rivers. And um, really my teachers, you know, even though I didn't grow up in these ways, I've spent over half my life uh, learning, reconnecting and ensuring my son um, knows these ways. And um, so it was uh, heartwarming to hear uh, Nancy or Coco talk about getting outside because those were my teachers, uh, the, the, the plants, the trees, um, the four-legged, the swimmers, everything moving around um, the places and spaces that I grew up. Um, I also learned later uh, from one of my teachers and mentors, Stephanie Williams, Ojawashku Dewe Ganekwe, about the importance of not only listening to our human Arzokan, but uh, again, listening, listening to our relatives out in the woods and in the forests. And I know um, even though I, I, I teach in our Western education system um, and I, I bring in some of our Western uh, teachings, I also bring in our Anishinaabe ways of knowing. And I can't tell you how many times that I've sat out by Chigaming and She's given me teachings to bring into the classroom about how clinicians should be working with, with our human relatives. So the, the power of story um, uh, and the life-changing ways that it has, I, I absolutely agree with Nancy and Roxanne and, and Michael and Keller. Um, it really, we, we pause, we listen, we learn and, and then we can go full circle and share. And for me, that has been just um, a beautiful way uh, to, to, to carry on in this walk. I just wanted to, to hold space for one more thing since we're really um, speaking to and for and about um, our, our territories near the boundary waters that uh, you know, today is Nibigijikad, World Water Day, which I, I know Roxanne and Nancy and Dixie and many of our, our, our female relatives would say, uh, every day is <laughs> Nibigijikad, <laughs> every day is, is we stand with and speak for the water. And I, um, so, so besides stories, besides um, you know, providing heart and head knowledge, yeah, um, similar to what, what Roxanne um, said, I believe it gives us guidance as far as action. So I'd be remiss in not bringing up, um, you know, the, 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 the negative actions that are happening with many of our Anishinaabe waterways, especially um, over in Bad River now as they're looking at line five. Um, so so I, I, I want to give voice and speak for our, our voiceless uh, relatives, the water. Um, as some of our human relatives don't uh, seem to understand what they're doing um, with, with their bad behaviors. Um, with that, I just want to say miigwech, meet you, and I'm going to turn it over to Keller, who should have spoken before me. Miigwech. Miigwech. Bungi eta gigid. I e I think it's just great to be with you all, miigwech everyone, and I feel humbled to be here too. Koko apane bizdunan, apane indaso dawanian migo gikino magayan. Wow! <laughs> Every time she opens her mouth, she's it's like a teaching. Something comes out. It's just great. Her life experiences, uh -huh, and so miigwech. open to share. Yeah. Hey, uh, um, you know. I see I was kind of cruising through some of the question and answer section. Um, there were some good questions there. 
And I think some of them require uh, follow-ups and longer discussions. Um, you know, um, and I have a whole bunch of ideas there. I think we would just run out of time um, to handle some of those, but they're good questions. And I also wanted to share with you, you know, some of the things you're not really going to find in books, I guess, unless you uh, connect with community members who do these practices and, and live this way. So um, our storytelling season, typically down in Southwest Ojibwe country, which is like around Northwest Wisconsin, those Ojibwe communities there, and then in Minnesota too, and then on Can the Can uh, Canadian side there, Nigigus Minikane and Chima Aganing and in those places too. Um, you know, it starts when there's snow on the ground and um, it ends when the snow starts to go away. Um, down here specifically, there's kind of like a, a teaching that um, we have. And when uh, we open up our sugar camps, we do sugar bush ceremony before we go out and tap trees. We tell one last Atazukan. So I actually did that today and um, Monday, yeah, yesterday. Um, so that was told. And that kind of marks the end of our storytelling season by telling that legend, that specific mm -hmm. legend. So there, there are certain beginnings and ending timeframes of when it's appropriate and not to tell them. Um, but I, I think about connectedness, you know, what's contained in the stories. And we've all heard just on this Zoom call how... Um, powerful and important they are and that they're animate beings and they have spirits and all that kind of thing um and they're connected to place right so a lot of those stories will um mention specific places they'll mention um specific beings it talks about origin stories it talks about teachings about how to be and how not to be um and I, and I just think about a place like the Boundary Waters and Quetico, which is really where Nancy is from. Like, that's her home there, that whole big area. And I think having more people on from that area, maybe on some of these other panels, too, because I know Coco knows a lot of other speakers from her region or elders from there. Um, and then on the, the Minnesota side as well, there, there are a lot of people who carry knowledge and who have live their lives in that area for many generations who would be really useful to have on some of these calls, maybe as follow-ups. But I, I think about place, you know, um, and if we talk about climate change, like what happens if, if, if um, the mining industry all of a sudden pushes really hard and for some awful reason they're successful and they, want to get rid of the boundary waters and they want to start mining those places and logging those places and flooding them out and putting dams in for hydro and all that and i think that would be one of the most terrible things that we that could ever happen um so i guess from our standpoint at least from mine personally too and working with language for 20 some years and getting to know the community i think that's a noble cause to to stand up for that, not just for Anishinaabe people, but for all people in all life. You know, in the other, the first panel we talked about, um, I don't know, we we're on a topic about creation. And in some Ojibwe communities, we believe that Anishinaabe were the last ones to be put here, meaning that everything before us will be just fine if we're all done. And uh, and boy, that's a that's a message about, hey, wake up there's a lot more life out here than just human beings. Yeah. And, uh, and if, if that goes, everything's going to go, it's not just for us and for our benefit, but it's, it's about everything that's out there. So like what Nancy was saying there about taking your kids out from when they're babies, just to give you an example, um, 
when we started with language, you know, and if there's any language students out there, or if this recording somehow makes its way in the future to someone who's listening out there after we're all gone, it's possible to rebuild things and really grow our culture with just a small group of people sometimes. Um, and sometimes these profound changes throughout generations are initiated by just a small group of people. And so I think that's important never to forget that. And Nancy had always told us too when we were just getting started. And honestly, I knew about two words of Ojibwe when I was just getting started. I knew Bukwejigan, Junia, <laughs> oh, and then I knew Gagigan, which my grandma says is that thing that hangs down in the back of your throat when you open up your mouth, your uvula, that little thing. So she'd yeah. always say that. Oh, you got gigan. And I go open up my mouth and she go, okay, you're not sick. Go outside. Get out of here. So we'd go run around. But that that little you bit of gigan. knowledge and you just get started. It, and so here we are, 20 some years later. We we were fortunate enough to really make a language program and a, an organization that helps a lot of people. But we believe those teachings, my wife and I, from the start. Um, and Nancy's teaching about having younger people out in the bush. We did, we did just that. So um, I intentionally would take my daughter, Donis, mm -hmm. and our son when they were babies, and I would carry them in the pack out to Sugarbush snowshoeing hauling sap they'd get tired we'd make a bed on the on the ground somewhere warm for her and then wrap them up and put them down and that's what they would see is the treetops and sugar camp in the springtime and so those were some of their earliest memories in establishing them and sure enough all the sound and the energy and the laughing by the fire and the hear the sap boiling and all that and telling stories um those kids are are different, I think, because of those experiences. And we are too as parents and knowing that it 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 works and it's what we're supposed to do to be out there, you know. Very good. So I um I think that's really uh important to remember about those those wild places and that our stories are connected to them specifically. Like our our traditional legends don't talk about um the volcanoes of Hawaii uh, and the islands there, they don't talk about the, um, you know, the great land features of in Africa and the animals there. Ours are connected right here in Ojibwe country and Boundary Waters is right in the heart of it, um, as is Quetico and the other places. So I, I'm just glad we still have it and we're still here and we're able to do this. So Miigwech, Miu. Oh, wow, Miigwech, Kadeboy. Somebody mentioned uh, today is a water day or something. Well, I yeah. think I think some of the things that um, we should be reminding our uh, our future generation is we used to offer tobacco to the water quite a bit. Every time we, uh, if we're going to go swimming, if we're going to go paddling, grandma said, make sure you offer your tobacco before you get in your canoe or before you go swimming. So the water spirits are, um, are very important too. I don't know what that is in English, but I did a story here not long ago, Jason and I, I think Jason, Jason might still have the picture of it, of that. When it does, me always be near Bang in the be. He is here at the gate. He 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 runs backwards, and Grandma said he he's cleaning the he pushing the dirty water away. Kito, go to this year Bang go we na make it kito. Me just always go be in that corner and do he he be in that corner to get there in the big gang. I think that's what we are we honored when we put our tobacco in the water. Me eh me get in a minute. Well, I'll take off of what um, Keller mentioned as he brought up the fact that we were the last ones placed here. And so all of creation was put here before us. 
and and in in the way that I was told, okay, there's there's a relevance and an importance to that. That when that first human being was first lowered, just how gently and how carefully they were brought here, so that as their feet touched the earth, even that they broke not even a blade of grass. They stepped ever so carefully onto this place, say, eh? because um, they were here before us. And, and, and from the time we got here, all of those other spirit beings have taken care of us. They have all at some point in time stood up for us. Okay. I don't know of, of many within creation that haven't at some point in time that there isn't a story that talks about how they stood up and said, I will do this for them. Oh, they're so pitiful. <laughs> I will do this for them. Or, oh, they need our help. I will do this for them. Or, oh, but who will play with me? I mean, I will do this for them. And so I, I, think, about, I think about our trees and I think about you know, our animal relatives. And I think about all of those ones that have you know, at some point in time, um, spoke up for us, spoke up to our creator and said, you know, well, we'll, we'll help them. We'll help them, we'll take care of them. And so I, I can almost hear Keller telling that, that last story. I can almost hear it because I, I, I know the, the importance of, of that one and the gift that they gave to us. So, so I think that when I, when I think about that and I think about the 1854 treaty and how it was that all of our, you know, our, our uncles and our grandpas, when they stood there and they were listening and they were so attentive and when they signed their name, but they had, they had thought, you know, so far ahead to all of those things that were important to us to take care of, okay? So that we would survive. And in that way, I think about it like this, that they too were speaking up for us, that, that, they, were, that they were being reciprocal now in how um, we had been spoken up for, they were speaking up now. And I think that that becomes our responsibility as human beings, as, as Anishinaabe. I don't know about the other people, you know, they think different, <laughs> they think different than we do. They have different stories. So they, they have different values and different beliefs. And, you know, I, I feel bad for them sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, but, you know, I know for us, I think, I think it, that's our responsibility now is that we have to speak up for those trees and we have to speak up for those animals and we have to speak up for the water because it spoke up for us. We have to now take our turn at that. And we have to be vocal because we've stopped listening. Human beings have stopped listening. Gosh, Coco, we were on a water walk from south to north. And we were walking along the Mississippi River and my niece and I were carrying a bucket of water and an eagle staff. And we got back in the car because we were now following the walkers. And um, my niece goes, Auntie, do you see that? Do you see that? I said, my girl, are you paying attention? Look. She goes, oh my God. Because as those walkers were walking and it, it's this big canopy hay of all these huge trees along the Mississippi. And as the walkers were walking down the road, those trees were coming down to them like that. It was this, it was this beautiful wave of trees as these women were walking and praying and how the trees came down and thanked them. Hey, it was, it was amazing. Hey, it was amazing. And, and I have never doubted the power of those ones. Hey, never, never. I always look for the biggest one and I always acknowledge that one. I, I try to acknowledge, you know, I, I gotta I gotta think for trees. I don't know what it is. Okay, but but I but when I see those big ones, I stop, I pause, I acknowledge them, I thank them. Okay. Because I think it's our turn to speak up for them. I think it's our job now to to talk for them. Just like they stood up and they talked for us. All those medicines that have you know spoke up for us. 
all those things. In, but but in the in the in the chat there was a question: Is storytelling totally an oral tradition, or does it include other forms, um, such as art and dance? Now I don't know about art and dance, but I do know about song and the stories that are carried in our songs. And, the, and how it is that our voice is supposed to sound, okay? how we're supposed to speak as much as we can. And I, and I don't have as many words as I would like, but I know the stories that are carried in the songs and, I, and I'm fortunate to carry a number of songs. And, and so um, it, it's all about, you know, it's all about how we, how we think. And, and how our, our stories center us in who we are and the way we go forward. So I, I just wanted to say that a little bit, but I, I was really caught by that question. I just think it's time for us now to speak up for them. Okay. <clears throat> Miigwech. Miigwech. Um, I think if we're kind of going in a certain order, we would be hearing again from Wase Gije. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, someone had just mentioned uh, climate change earlier, and uh, this is the one of the things that we study and we monitor at uh, Glyphwick, the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission. And I was thinking about our storytelling traditions and how we, you know, we. we we, we start telling the stories when the snow is on the ground and that continues all through the winter until the snow melts. And then that's when sugar bush season begins. But also during that time too, there's a star constellation that follows uh, the period of when the snow is on the ground. <clears throat> the rest of the world knows that constellation as Orion, but we know it, we know it by several names, Gabibona Ked, or Bibonike Winine, and what that means is the winter maker. And throughout all those months of, of snow on the ground, that constellation is overhead. <clears throat> and you can watch that constellation in the movement. And when it gets closer to the western horizon, where it will eventually sink below, uh, that is also uh, springtime as well. So our cosmos has all of these alignments that, uh, that work together and you can only know them if you go out and observe them, observe the movement of the stars and the budding of the trees and the breaking of the ice. But at Glyphwick, we keep track of the data on climate change <clears throat> and we produce a document called the vulnerability assessment and what that, living document um, records is all of the species of trees and fish and birds and, and mammals that can be affected by climate change according to these complex uh, prediction models. And three species that are of, of high risk of being impacted by climate change is uh, <clears throat> Oga, which is our walleye. Our walleye require very cold lakes to, to thrive in. When, if our lakes are starting to warm up, um, their viable habitat begins to, to dwindle. Another species is wabozo, the snowshoe hare. Um, many, many of our animal relatives depend upon the existence of the snowshoe hare. Um, if, that, if that relative of ours is threatened, a lot of other relatives are going to be threatened as well. <clears throat> and then the other one is Monomen, wild rice. Wild rice is also predicted to be threatened by uh, a, warming, a warming climate. But one question I have is that what happens, what happens to Anishinaabe people when, if say one, one year we don't have snow on the ground? Maybe we just have ice because of a changing climate. What happens to our traditions, uh, our, our Nanabojo stories, our Adazukanuk? <laughs> you know, if there's no snow, if it's all ice, 
what do we do? You know, and those days are coming. I mean, we've already passed a, a tipping point already in climate change where we can't reverse uh, some of the changes that's happening. We're going to have to start putting our mind towards adaptation and resiliency. But, um, and I know for a fact that Anishinaabe people will adapt, not only adapt, but thrive. And, and, and one of the ways that I see that happening is one, you know, our, our Anishinaabe language was under threat by the federal government for a hundred years. They, they tried to annihilate the language with, with federal boarding schools. And now look what's happening. Not only are we revitalizing our languages, but we're, we're doing it on Zoom too during a, during a <laughs> pandemic. And we're, we're getting better at it. I, I see Anishinaabe people as well as other indigenous peoples around the world as being the most resilient and the most adaptive people. So I don't think that our culture is threatened, but we're going to have to start thinking in terms of fighting for our lands, like, like uh, Keller said earlier, and also what do we do if this happens? What do we do if, uh, if the wild rice moves north? Or, or what happens if the Oga, Ogawag, the, the walleye disappear from our lakes? So those are some of the thoughts that have been crossing my mind since we've been in this discussion. So, no, miigwech. I think um, I, th I think I get an echo when I talk. I think about that too, if that ever happens. And I know my grandmother would say, "Good evening, Dakota." That's what my, my grandma would say. What would happen? Pick up your tobacco and pray for the good things to, uh, to come back or, or to stay. And the one I've heard about uh, Atsoka Anan is uh, we, we lived in a bush all the time. Eh? And you start Atsoka Anan in the fall, Kimaji Atsoke Gitagogik. And then uh, it ends when you hear a crow back, which is this month. That's how we, that's what we were told. Sometimes there's no snow at all in March and we still carry on with my, with our, our um, and then, but you hear a crow out there. We, we lived up down, I say a hundred, a hundred miles from here. And 15th of March was always the first day we hear the crow coming back. But now the crows are all in town. Crows are over here right now. <laughs> that's, the way we, that's the way my grandmother taught me, is whenever you hear a crow, you don't hear a crow in the fall, they're gone. Now you can start at Sokanan, and then you hear it, it's back. Now it's time, no more. Bama mi noa. That was, that was my teaching about uh, Atsoka Anan. And I think we're talking about our um, future generation. I've been to a lot of meetings. They talk about uh, the young people, the, the next generation. But the, the, these young people know what we're talking about. Do they know that we're talking about their future? I ask that sometimes. If we should have a student here, maybe, um, maybe a boy and a girl carry on to the, there. So they can, they can pass the teaching on, they can talk about the teaching down to, hey, this is what I heard, hey, this is what we got to do, we're, we're the future generation, we got to find out more about this, let's go join them in their meeting, let's go sit in the meeting. I, I was, I was, uh, I was always told there used to be a uh, elders gathering somewhere, where they're enjoying their tobacco, sitting on the sunlight somewhere, and then just sitting on, by the field there. And grandma says, Majan, we've been in Doga Gagi Go over there, go listen, go listen. And they didn't, they didn't send me away. I was pretending to be playing around, but in the meantime, I'm I'm listening to sometimes they talk about 
things that I shouldn't hear, but some most of the time they were they were sharing their uh, their stories, their experience in life, and you you hear a lot in there when you listen to two elders talking. And I I wonder. The other day we had a meeting for each Ituin, which is talking about the the the, the, the the children that's that's in a foster home. But I did not see a young child there to listen about talking about their future. I don't know if it's documented or I don't know. I just I just wonder. I wish I could see a young people sitting around when I'm talking. Me am Igwech Bama as this I'm oh, saying, I'm just about to fall asleep now, I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Young ones will benefit from hearing um, some of this. This will, what um, we're doing tonight is our hope is that we can take these recordings and share that with them so that they can hear what you're talking. About I think so. I think the others are talking about. I think they need to know that we are talking about. Yeah, I think they should know that we are talking about their their, their future, the future generation. They might be stop and listen. Hey, they honored us, they talked about us or something like that, but I tried with my grandkids, but they when to go, she says you can't visit. So what do I do? Me. Miigwech. Miigwech. Miigwech for giving us that guidance and reminding us of the importance of that. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear that. All right. We're, um, I'm going to get a 10 minute reminder here soon, but um, I'd like to hear from Leah one more time. Um, the, the theme that's been resonating with me is the importance of listening. And I, I really don't feel like, like I have much to say. I have still so much more to learn. And I want to just say miigwetch to all of you that surround me in the Hollywood squares <laughs> for, sh for sharing, you know, sharing your teachings. And, uh, but my Niawea uh, Buana Navikwe, uh, she said, pretty soon you're going to have to start speaking. Pretty soon you're going to have to start sharing. So um, your, your time for, for sitting and listening, you, you know, it, it is good, but there's going to be a time where you need to start speaking. And um, so it's, it's been an honor to, to sit and, and listen and uh, learn from all of you. And I just want to share, Nancy, that my son my son, uh, he got to meet your, your son this last summer. Oh, yeah. Hey, bomb. And um, he's going to come, come fast and, and, and get some teachings this summer. So wow. uh, I, I look forward to meeting you face to face and, and um, having my son learn from your son, <laughs> who, who, is, who has learned from you. Uh, I want to just say miigwetch for, for how you've raised your children and how many lives they've touched. Um, directly and indirectly, directly, directly, just, just, uh, miigwech. <laughs> yeah, miigwech, me. Uh ho, miigwech. And I know Keller thinks he's just going to wait out his time. <laughs> I want to um, kind of echo what um, a theme that I've been hearing that Leah brought, um, just talked about my girls are giggling in the back. I don't know if you can hear them. <laughs> I can hear them. <laughs> they sound happy. <laughs> <laughs> They're very happy, very happy girls. Um, is 
you know, with Arazu Khan, you know, that's being a really good listener is something that's incredibly important as well, right? And like how um, it's like almost like a skill, you know, we have to teach our children that too as well. Um, the importance of, you know, sitting and listening. So thank you for bringing that, um, bringing that up, man, or Leah, you're great. Okay, good dog, good dog, Sijige, Bungi. How? Oh, Nijo Misquabi Kuns. I, um, there was, there was a question there in the QA about, um, what's the best way to teach, uh, something? And, um, I don't know if there is a best way. Um, you know, and we just the six of us Anishinaabe people here don't represent all of the views of the Anishinaabe nation in its entirety. It's massive, yeah, in Canada and U.S. side. Um, and we are but one tribe of many tribes, of course, within North America. So um, there are many ways of doing things and acquiring knowledge. So if you want to know about integrating culture and language, et cetera, into your programs, I would say what Leah had just said, listen, come out, come and get to know Anishinaabe communities and people and the ones who are doing the things you want to learn more about, the ones who are the academicians who are writing PhDs about it, the ones who are on the trap line, um, live in that lifestyle, the ones who are studying the rice and the climate effects of Manuman and the ones who know how to take care of rice beds and all that kind of thing and language keepers and all that. I would say invest the time in listening and reaching out and uh, develop relationships and kind of putting our own agendas aside and just to see what's out there and uh, establish the collaboration I think might be useful for figuring out ways to enrich your programs. The other question too someone had was who can tell stories um, and uh, from what I know and you'll probably get six different answers if we go around the horn again um, is um, really it said you can tell stories too if you want to learn. Um, you know the elders would say like Nancy said, Bindakuj again, you lead with your tobacco, right? That's what they told us to do. So um, it's kind of like when you, um, you might revere a classical pianist or something, maybe in the mainstream world or like a cellist or something like Yo-Yo Ma, and you say, I want to, I want to learn, I want to play cello because I'm so inspired by that. Well, you're going to track down Yo-Yo Ma. And you're gonna figure out what it makes to what it takes to learn to to play cello that way. You're gonna study from other cellists. You're gonna, you know, like someone who's a good auto mechanic or whatever knows how to wrench on vehicles and repair things. You're gonna seek them out. So I think that's what we're taught when we want to become. Um, we want to know about our stories. Firstly, we listen, and then our offerings. And the offerings are not just cash, I pay for this or anything, but it's to recognize those money do those spirits that are with those stories. So it's not just you're not really, I guess you are giving it to that person. But that person sort of, they're kind of like a spirit themselves to a representative in that capacity that they carry that those knowledge and those teachings along. And so I think that's what you do. So you might see people make bundles of gifts. When they go ask for something, you'll see some of those, but there's a whole plethora of traditional protocols, I think, when you get into knowledge seeking, knowledge sharing, and respecting and perpetuating knowledge that I think are really great as a cultural toolbox that um, Anishinaabe Ojibwe people should know about, but also in the mainstream world, right? Because it, it just isn't one group of people, one view. We're all here together to... to make the best of what we can of everything here but um that's kind of what i was seeing and i just wanted to kind of grab one of those questions off the q a so we didn't leave you hanging out there 
but we're certainly open to answering more questions. Email us later. Um, and uh, I think, Dixie, you have contact information or someone does that can be shared in work email. Miigwech. Duzamadun Minawa. Miigwech. Miigwech. Kegit. Kitunzamadone. No, Miigwech. Ae, a pangi, kick up Gand Kano tank to get to it. Ae, got the shintaman. Tia Tawaya. Pagichikan key mean and Tawaya. Keep a bucket, keep a bucket in the Mawak. Nimbawa nak. Yogami get get nin gagishkan. He spit they go me, meaning go on. Where did the station got to go at the car which he wat and scare away they got my garbit? Me away new geese or go with the pintan gay go gee me go on. Me to shima when jag eh, when you when you bagam shag. You go which eating gay go. You been dark or not. Obawa chicken nut like a great chimat gay go, scarce say man gee me, not me not way a wish in the wind, in not way in the bear say ma. Obawa chicken nut away, you been dark or not, go no net to go away, gaggy, gaggy get up. Me young good thing, um, good thing away and known the war. You get up. Go shall say man gee me, nigga, sing, you shall go in them to gaggy get on. Me ekit up the way, me take it this way. He wants to know a gay gag, he get to 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 yeah, so she's just kind of going a little deeper and extending what uh, I had just mentioned at a surface level about that you're when you're offering tobacco, it's to that person's dream. Um, the helpers. That the, they're like spirit helpers or the ones who are connected with that person or that knowledge that that person carries. So that's kind of what you're you're offering up to when you when you do that. Honoring them, yeah. Yeah. You know? And yeah, she yeah, also yeah. said too that like in some cases, people being asked to talk without tobacco, like on a traditional topic, it's kind of like you can't really, they feel reluctant to open up about it because it's not uh, acknowledging that connection or that channel to honor that um, mm -hmm. those money do that are there or that they're connected with. So um, I heard um, <clears throat> a storyteller say one time, all right, I'm about ready to start here. And um, I was just gonna start talking about whatever I want here. I can I can say whatever the heck I want unless you wanna to put tobacco in my hand and then I'll get down to business. So they were ready to just tell all these BS stories and go off. But then finally somebody ran up from the program. Oh, oh yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Because it's not for that person; it's for the connection of the of all the other things and the right on, uh, that they're connected to. So, and some people, it to. takes a while to figure that out, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's coming though. They're learning. <laughs> I'm like you. I'm a big mouth when I'm at the meeting. I talk about that all the time. Nietzsche and Sammy don't. I'm going to do a real quick too, only because I, I really appreciate what Michael said about us being adaptable and resilient. And that um, really this is, this too is a piece of our blood memory. But I will tell you this, I never asked to be resilient. Neither did my mother, neither did my grandmother or my great-grandmother, or my great-great-grandmother, we never asked for that, okay? Instead, we were adaptable, but don't make us have to adapt all the time, <laughs> you know? Resilience isn't, isn't necessarily a good thing because instead it allows people to think that it's okay. They're resilient, you know? They're resilient, they can take it. No, don't quit making us take it, <laughs> you know? The, the truth is that 
you know, we're getting ready to walk into a world. This is this is a world that, and many of you young people are getting ready to walk into a world that we won't be in. Okay, and we're trying to give you as much as we can. We want to get. We don't want to, you know, make you adaptable. We want to instead prepare you as much as we can. So, I, so I really hope that you're listening, because this is not a place we'll be where you're going. And, and so we want to give you as much as we can before you go there. Miigwech. Aha, miigwech. Great. I just want to, um, miigwech to all the, everyone for being here tonight. And Coco, I stepped away, my earbuds were in, but I just had to <laughs> close my eyes for a minute. And it reminded me um, in you talking about us being young and hearing stories and not necessarily knowing what was being said, but just listening. And it reminded me, um, I'm coming up on the anniversary of my mom walking on. And I just remember being a little kid and tired and just laying on her and just that cadence of her talking and not knowing what that sound was, but just mm -hmm. understanding it on a deep level now that I'm older about, um, yeah, and it was just, it's just, Tonight's been very beautiful and I feel very blessed to have been a part of all of this. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I look forward to us hopefully all coming back together. And Allison, I don't know if you want to share or Dixie the details of our next time. We'll be back together as a, as a group for those that are able to make it. I can share. Okay. Um, so for our next panel, we are hoping to talk, hoping to talk, did I say that correctly? I feel very nasally, sorry. <laughs> um, hoping to talk about, um, Minumina Kaylin and, um, you know, continuing this dialogue, I think that it's really powerful that we, um, um, are having, you know, all of you come back again and again, you know, because then we can um, continue to build on what we've talked about and um, share, you know, um, even from the previous um, week's topics, you know, because they all come together. It's all, it's a holistic, you know, way of learning and understanding. And so next week we'll be talking about writing. Is that, is that a different Zoom? We're gonna send another one or same one? Yep, we'll send you the information. Are okay. you able to attend? I think so. Wonderful. I just, I just need a reminder. <laughs> All right, we can do that. Aho, miigwech. Mm -hmm. Hello, miigwech. miigwech, everybody coming to miigwech, 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 miigwech everyone. Miigwech, kegi noa. Miigwech, kegi wa men. Kegi wa ba miigwech men noa. Ngon na meigi ishak ishak. Miigwech. Oh wow.